welcome so in this lecture we are going to look at applications of the concepts that we have learnt in the previous class how do we characterize the rate expression how do we propose a rate mechanism how do we evaluate the constants in the rate expression and then how do we go on to design a reactor uh, just let me take you through the various uh, things that we are on we are on uh, the fourth part of our of our of our course solid catalyzed reactions okay this is the last lecture in this topic where we are going to look at estimation of kinetic parameters and how we will design reactor based on these kinetic parameters just to revise just to help you revise the what has happened in the previous two lectures write the steps involved in solid catalyzed reactions what methodology should we follow to find a rate expression for catalytic reactions this is what i want you to uh, think about and if you do these two things it will be an automatic revision for all the things that we have done in our previous couple of lectures so here is a problem let's get started with the problem so that we can understand all of these so for example hydrodialkylation of toluene let's call it as t using hydrogen gas let's call it as h is carried out in catalytically in the vapor phase to give you benzene b and methane m what is the rate what is the reaction toluene c7h8 in the gas phase plus hydrogen in the gas phase gives you benzene in the gas phase and methane in the gas phase all these are in the gas phase because the reaction is at high temperature so this is a, a, this is, so somebody has done this in the laboratory and uh, remember what i had said about last time we vary all these parameters concentration of various reactants products and see how the rate is uh, how the rate uh, can be uh, how the rate varies with all these parameters so somebody has done these experiments at 640 degrees centigrade here is the data rate versus different parameters what are the parameters partial pressure of toluene this is not total pressure it's partial pressure of toluene okay so partial pressure of toluene is varied from 0.5 atmospheres to 20 atmosphere partial pressure of hydrogen is varied partial pressure of methane is varied sometimes methane is deliberately added methane is a product but sometimes methane is deliberately added to give you partial pressure of methane 4 atmosphere or 1 atmosphere or there is no no, no methane present benzene benzene is a product okay so sometimes this benzene is added in the in in the reaction mixture and the rate is measured okay and sometimes it is not there sometimes it is partial pressure is 5 atmospheres so you can see how the experiments are carried out by varying partial pressures of the reactants as well as the products and the measured rate is given for these various combinations of partial pressures what i want to do is propose a rate expression based on this experimental data okay do this for yourself pause the video do it for yourself so let's take a closer look at the data and see the dependence of partial pressure of individual components okay this is the same table okay, i have just compressed it a little bit reduce the column widths now let's look at the data and see dependence of partial pressure of individual components what are the individual components toluene hydrogen methane benzene these are the individual components let's see how the rate depends on individual component partial pressures can you identify do that for yourself pause the video if you compare let's say these two rows everything is the same in these two rows except partial pressure of benzene you see or if you take these two this row and this row 
only thing that is different between these two rows is partial pressure of methane if you take these two rows only thing that is different is partial pressure of benzene if you take these three rows only thing that is different is partial pressure of hydrogen if you take these four rows what is different among these four rows is partial pressure of toluene so if you look at all these things let's say or if you look at these two what is different is only partial pressure of methane or these two partial pressure of methane is different okay. you see that so if you look at these two rates 71 and 71.3 rate is practically not changing when partial pressure of methane is increased by a factor of 4 1 atmosphere to 4 atmosphere okay. or here 41.6 becomes 42 when partial pressure of methane is changed from 0 to 1 that means if you plot rate versus partial pressure of methane you find that rate is independent of partial pressure of methane so rate does not depend on partial pressure of methane okay. if you look at these two rows benzene partial pressure is increasing by a factor of 4 and rate is reduced dramatically from 41.6 to 19.7 right and if you consider these two rows methane has no role right and in this case when benzene partial pressure increases by a factor of 5 methane although it is present it has no role because it is independent of methane concentration partial pressure rate reduces from 42 to 17 dramatic change okay. or if you look at these two rows benzene is not there benzene is here one atmosphere the rate is reducing from 71 to 42 so in all these cases rate if you plot versus partial pressure of benzene you will find that rate drops with respect to partial pressure of benzene that means somewhere if you write a rate expression that rate expression has to be like rate proportional to 1 by partial pressure of benzene okay. look at these two these three partial pressure of hydrogen increases from 1 to 2 to 4 by a factor of 4 and rate increases from 71.8 to 142 to 284 it's increasing by a factor of 4 71 to 142 almost doubling almost double here 142 to 284 almost four times here see so rate is proportional to partial pressure of hydrogen that's what we can conclude from these three look at these three look at these last four 0.5 1 10 20 partial pressure of toluene is increasing as partial pressure of toluene is increasing rate is increasing but then at a high partial pressure of toluene the rate is practically the same even if you double there is a very small change whereas here if you double it is practically doubling so it's like rate is first order with respect to toluene at low concentrations rate is practically zero order with respect to toluene at high concentrations so rate versus partial pressure if you plot it will look something like this this can be expressed as rate equal to some proportional to partial pressure of toluene divided by 1 plus equilibrium constant for adsorption multiplied by partial pressure of toluene remember this Okay. Now, the rate expression, we can combine all of these. Propose. 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 Do it for yourself. Pause the video. This is how we can propose. This could be one proposition. Rate is proportional to partial pressure rate constant, partial pressure of toluene, partial pressure of hydrogen divided by 1 plus partial pressure of toluene, equilibrium constant for adsorption of toluene, equilibrium constant for adsorption of benzene multiplied by partial pressure of benzene. This rate expression explains all these observations. Okay. Now we have to find parameters K, capital KT, capital KB. These are the three parameters which we have to fit to match this data 
how will we do that think for yourself fit pause the video do it for yourself get these parameters k capital kt capital kb do it for yourself pause pause do it for yourself only when you do it you will be able to understand so one of the ways is to do multi linear regression we can rearrange this rate expression i can do 1 by r as reciprocal of this expression then 1 by r will be proportional to this plus this plus this now if i do multi linear regression multi linear regression means i do a regression this is our y is equal to this is our x1 if you like this is our x2 this is our x3 so our expression is a y is equal to a0 x1 plus if you want just take a1 b1 c1 a1 x1 b1 x2 y1 just take abc abc x3 so if i do multi linear regression between y and x1 and x2 and x3 i will get these three constants a b and c once i get these three constants i can calculate a i know b i know and c i know i can find out these three constants k capital kt and capital kb use a spreadsheet excel or something like that to do the multi linear regression if you have not learned how to do multi linear regression in excel stop pause the video do it for yourself only then you will learn pause pause do it for yourself here is how you do multi linear regression so if you take this data put it in excel and 1 by r this is what we have to plot now we'll do regression 1 by r versus 1 by ptph2 ptph2 this is our first parameter this is our second parameter ph2 oops 1 by ph2 third is pb by ptph2 pb by ptph2 so i have to do multi linear regression between this y x1 x2 x3 and this is how you will do in regression you can input y range you can input x range and you say constant is zero because there is no constant we have our a x1 plus b x2 plus c x3 there is no constant it's not y is equal to mx plus c that no constant constant is not there constant is zero because we want constant to be zero we have to say that constant is zero okay and then now if you click on okay you will get the parameters regression parameters this is how it will look like so first of all r square that tells you how good the fit is so r square is 0.999 excellent fit and the intercepts is zero intercept is zero right these are the variables x1 x2 x3 so this is our x1 x2 and x3 okay and you see the confidence in, and you see the 95% confidence interval if you have done statistics you know that f value and the p uh, f value and the p values these tell you that fit is excellent f value is very high p values are very low fit is excellent okay. so now this is your a1 a2 uh, sorry a b and c so this is your a b and c a is this b is this and c is this coefficients all right now from these coefficients you can get the rate expression uh, you can get rate uh, you can get the constants k would be 1.4 into 10 raised to minus 8 kt by k would be 1.0072 atmosphere raised to minus 1 kb would be 1.25 Seven nine atmosphere raised to minus one. R square is point nine nine nine. It's an excellent fit. Okay. So this is how we would find out the rate constants and equilibrium constants. Look at k. K has units of whatever are the units of um, 
PTPH2. This rate has units. It, has, it is rate is given in terms of what? Right, gram moles of toluene per gram of catalyst per second. So correspondingly, the rate constant will have units of second inverse. Yet it's not. It's not. It's not second inverse like this. This is to be rubbed out. Right. So this will have units of something something, and uh, per second. KT. KT is like an equilibrium constant, equilibrium constant for toluene adsorption. So KT PT will have no units. Okay. Rate is given in terms. What is the rate given in terms of? Let's see. Oops. Rate is given in terms of gram moles of toluene per gram of catalyst per second. Rate is in terms of gram mole catalyst, gram moles of toluene. Per gram of catalyst per second is equal to K P T partial pressure of toluene atmosphere partial pressure of hydrogen atmosphere. So K will have units of gram mole per gram catalyst per second per atmosphere square. That's how the rate constant will be. K will have units of gram mole per gram catalyst per second atmosphere square. This will be the unit of K. Okay, let's go forward. All right, this will be the rate expression. If you have not understood, go back, revise. Only when you have understood this, go forward. Okay. Because we are going to solve a problem now based on this rate expression. Here is the next problem. So this above reaction is carried out in a packed bed reactor. Molar feed rate of toluene to the reactor is 50 gram mole per minute. Feed composition is 30 mole percent toluene, 45 mole percent hydrogen, 25 mole percent inerts. Reactor is operated at total pressure of 40 atmospheres and 640 degrees centigrade. Okay. Calculate the catalyst weight of catalyst required to obtain 30 percent conversion of toluene. Assume that the packed bed behaves like plug flow. Ah, remember now this is like your RTD. We are assuming that it behaves like a plug flow. Okay, just to make your life simple, I have given made this. I have told you to make this assumption. Okay, solve, solve, pause and solve for yourself. Here is the solution. Okay, first of all, draw a picture to visualize, and let's say XT is the toluene conversion. So here is the picture. So here is the catalyst bed of catalyst. Gas flow rate G is the gas flow rate. W is the dW is the weight of catalyst in this small differential element, and in this small differential element, mole fraction of toluene changes by dy t. Okay. So now what can we write? Minus G multiplied by dy of toluene would be equal to rate. Of reaction of toluene multiplied by dW multiplied by dW. So G is like kilomoles per second. If you want, it's just like just gram moles per second or kilomoles per second. So this is like kilomoles per second. So left hand side is kilomoles per second reacting. Kilomoles per second, and this rate is now gram mole per second per catalyst weight. And therefore, dW. So the units are matching. Kilomoles per second or gram moles per second. Mole fraction of toluene can we write as total partial pressure of toluene divided by total pressure? So this P zero. We are going to say P zero is the total pressure. Okay. And then this P zero is constant. What atmosphere? I am taking it out. So it will be D of Pt. Is equal to RT dW, and so minus G PT. I can write in terms of conversion. Partial pressure of toluene at any point would be partial pressure of toluene at the inlet minus conversion of toluene multiplied by partial pressure of toluene at the inlet. So get this for yourself. Imagine correct. Check if you get this for yourself. Make sure that you have understood everything here. Feed. What is the feed consisting of 50 gram moles of toluene per minute? 50 gram moles of toluene per minute. 
and toluene is 30 percent by moles so that means it is 50 divided by 0.3 into 60 or 2.78 gram moles of total mixture per second that is our g now remember this reaction is is peculiar that toluene toluene plus hydrogen giving you benzene plus methane two moles disappear two moles appear so total molar flow rate is not changing total molar flow rate at any location is not changing that's why we could take it outside that's why we could take this g as a constant this g does not depend on w total molar flow rate will always be 2.78 gram mole per second okay. so that's why we could take it outside okay partial pressure of toluene initial that's 40 atmosphere multiplied by 0.3 and P0 is the total pressure is 40 atmosphere. Okay. Partial pressure of toluene at the entry is 40 multiplied by 0.3. Partial pressure of hydrogen at the entry inlet is 40 multiplied by 0.45. So this is 18 atmosphere. This is 12 atmosphere. Okay. Consider this as hint. Pause and go forward and calculate the weight. Here is the answer. G divided by P0 is into PTI would be D of P XT. I have just, I have just simplified this. I have just taken the derivative. RT DW. So G PTI by P0 DXT K Pt pH2 1 plus K Pt Kb Pb. Right? All I have to do now is relate partial pressure of hydrogen, partial pressure of benzene to partial pressure of toluene. Then I can integrate straight away. So express Pt in terms of Xt. pH2 in terms of Xt, Pb in terms of Xt. Then we can integrate stoichiometry. This is material balance, child's play for you now. Let's go forward. So look at this Pt. Well, let me use another color. Pt. This we can write as Pt initial minus x of toluene into Pt initial. Partial pressure of hydrogen. Another color let me take. Partial pressure of hydrogen would be partial pressure of hydrogen at entering Stoichiometry, one mole toluene reacts, one mole hydrogen reacts. All right. Same way, Pt is in the denominator, same here. Partial pressure of benzene, one mole toluene reacts, one mole hydrogen, uh, one, mole, one mole benzene is formed. See this? All I have to do is now simplify. Put these values. Pt initial we know. P0 we know. G we know. Pt initial we know. Pt initial we know. Pt initial. Pt initial. P hydrogen initial. Pt initial. Pt initial. Kb we have fitted. K we have fitted. Kt we have fitted. Everything is known. There is only one differential equation in terms of xt. All I have to do is integrate from 0 to W and Xt going from 0 to 0.3. You can do numerically, either you can do numerical integration either you can use Excel in a spreadsheet or you can use your calculator. Your calculator allows you to do 
integration learn how to use calculator to do integration one of the life skills here is the answer substitute the values you will get w is equal to 1.5 into 10 raised to 6 grams or 1500 kilograms take care of units okay. make sure that you get this answer then only go forward then only go forward so next problem this was our rate expression k p t p h 2 divided by 1 plus k p t k b p b what is a possible mechanism and what could be a rate determining step that is consistent with the rate expression here think 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 go back to previous lecture if you want read that see that lecture again read the book read the chapter read the reference that i have given you then only solve solve for yourself then only go forward don't 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 just see the lecture solve then only go forward solve for yourself here is the possible answer pt appears in the denominator right that means it is like pt toluene is getting adsorbed partial pressure of hydrogen does not appear in the denominator that means hydrogen is not getting adsorbed partial pressure of benzene appears in the denominator so benzene is adsorbed fourth also we can write partial pressure of methane does not appear so that means methane is not getting adsorbed the reaction is irreversible reaction could be irreversible so what is the possible mechanism here is one possible mechanism toluene in the gas phase gets adsorbed gives you adsorbed toluene adsorbed toluene reacts with hydrogen see this is consistent hydrogen does not get adsorbed reacts with hydrogen in the gas phase benzene gets adsorbed but methane goes out in the gas phase and then the benzene desorbs so now for this case if we assume that the surface reaction is controlling and it is irreversible you derive rate expression for yourself pause do it right that means adsorption and desorption and fast and rich equilibrium so concentration of the adsorbed toluene is equal to kt toluene equilibrium constant for toluene adsorption partial pressure toluene cs cbs would be kb pb cs side balance okay. so rate of reaction k cts into partial pressure of hydrogen reaction is irreversible rate control right simplify so the proposed rate mechanism and rate determining step is consistent with experimental data isn't this easier to do rather than proposing all kinds of mechanism all kinds of uh, rate controlling steps and checking which one works right this is what is easier this is what i was saying in the last part last slide of the last lecture we look at the rate expression we look at the data we look at the data from the data identify dependence fit that data and then propose ah if this is the rate expression we are straight away coming to rate expression by looking at experimental data and if this is the rate expression what could be possible mechanism it's always much easier to do that rather than oh propose mechanism find rate constants find uh, fit the data and check if it works with matches with experimental data uh, too complicated too many possibilities are there whereas this way i propose mechanism straight away based on experimental observations and then propose a mechanism 
right? It's always much easier. Look at the last lecture once again, if you want, last slide of the last lecture. This is what we have done. Okay. So we'll stop this lecture here. If you want to practice some more problems, well, not if you want to, you must practice more problems and you can solve these problems. It's in, we are in chapter 10, fourth edition. 10, 4, 10, 6, 10, 8, 10, 9, 10, 15. These five problems, if you solve, that will give you more practice. Okay. So do this for yourself. Oh, solve these homework problems. Only then go ahead. We have come to the end of this part. Part 4 of our syllabus. Next part is going to be diffusion and reaction in the catalyst. Right? So, practice problems. Practice problems. Do the homework. Understand all these concepts. Then only go forward. And don't just see the lecture. Solve all these things yourself. Okay. So, stop here for this lecture.